Hello, hello, danger noodles. Oh, god damn it. Why isn't it? Why is it there like that? Come on. Game. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Fucking OBS. What's wrong? <laughs> OBS isn't doing what I tell it to. Oh. <laughs> OBS. Hello, everybody. This is, this is the game we're playing. Oh, no. Come on. Hold on, I'm gonna try something. F fuck off, outplayed. Alright, let's try opening and closing it again. Like the game. <laughs> Because it was doing just fine earlier. There should be no reason for it to just disappear. Oh, there it is. Oh, it is? It's there? Yeah! Fuck you, OBS. <laughs> Being a painful pain in my ass. Hang on, then. Open up Discord stream again. Alright. It immediately dies because of Discord. That would be funny. <laughs> I would actually laugh. You got six people. Hello, hello, six viewers. Hi, six viewers. We're gonna go on a murdering spree. Yeah, Bright's already played this game. We're just gonna... And, and we completed it with a good ending. It's time to just get everyone killed. Which will actually... It'll probably go by quick. I would imagine... Yeah. <laughs> Plus, you probably have an idea of where to go to get stuff now. I got a bottle of piss. Can you throw it? <laughs> That's that... a tough bottle of piss. <laughs> We're back down to four viewers. The bottle of piss got people to leave. <laughs> Hatchet, you're an expert on reading. What does this say? What the fuck did you just assign me to? The expert of reading. <laughs> <laughs> I am most certainly not. And also, that is very clearly gibberish. <laughs> what does that say? Hey, F-A-N. Oh, I can't go in there. I-E-K-F-A-M. The name of the radio station. Shouldn't I be the expert given my name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bookworm would be the expert. Also, hey, yo, book. Hi, book. Wait, Bookworm. Fuck off. Anyways, Bookworm, since you're a reading expert, what does this say? I believe in you. Oh, God damn it! My fucking mouse moved. Jibber sounds intensify. Lol. <laughs> also, there's no run button. Yeah. I can crouch, though. <laughs> Fancy. Oh, 
Oh shit, wait a minute. I'm supposed to go through that door. I never went through over here before. Um. Um. Oh, hi there. Well, I'm dead. Hi. Hi, handsome. Wanna bang? I'll take it as a yes. You just stumbled your way into getting killed instantly. Maybe. Oh. I got someone else killed. You hear something, Peggy? Huh? Um, hear what? Thought I heard someone yelling, or I don't know how. Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously? How do you confuse a human stuff? scream with the cat? Oh wait, never mind. Check the equipment for each show. And he pays us to call it a pre Wait a minute. Check. I forgot I mountain lions when they're mating, they, they can sound like human screams. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Fun You're going to die. We're about to hit some tubular ends. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player. And hit play. Easy. Um, the flow. Got it. Great. Now turn it off. All right. Up next, phone line button. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's a riot. What? Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Oh, sweet. I get is to press her buttons. I do that with Hatchet every day <laughs> on the <a> street. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. Oh. Hatchet. What? Peggy has a nice voice. <laughs> this is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. Fuck you. Turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Yeah, should know. Book says, oh, I thought someone I was going to make a joke side. about Peggy it's sounding like Peggy. Gets me in trouble. Now, let's I guess I didn't think started. about that. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. Oh, no, that's right. We we have to choose nope. what... Because they don't, our, they don't have a tape for a scream. I have to scream into the microphone. Okay, Boris, shut the music off. <laughs> Okay, you're live in three, two, one eighty nine point sixteen. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to one eighty nine point sixteen, The Scream. 
before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows yes. Creek's only <laughs> late night this phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have. Oh my gosh, she buffed him for a sec. Fuck you, OBS. That screen. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm gonna play you a scream, then you call and... Fuck headphones. Guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Hey, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, God I gave it. it to you yesterday. Fucking wire keeps connecting to my chair. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. I'm going to let you choose the scream, Hatchet. So... Uh -oh. oh, are you serious? I won't do it. I hate what I've become. <laughs> uh, I hate what I've become. Yeah. I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just... Oh my gosh, Sanji, you just go, ah, and it's done. Come on, Forrest, just do it. Enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to. No. <laughs> Look, no. We got the perturbed Yeti scream, the falling off from the cliff scream, and the drowning scream. Hatchet. I like Yetis. <laughs> you want the top one? What, which one do you think I would choose? I have, I still have a moderate cryptozoological uh, <laughs> fixation. The funny thing is, Hatchet, you and me chose the same scream. Nice. <sighs> well, folks. That was the scream. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win. <laughs> Two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough. Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guess. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Oh, I actually can't play these. The Watchers, Phobic, The Maddening, Serial Thriller, Payback, Living Death. Oh god, Forrest, amazing. Necrotic, <laughs> The Sleep, <laughs> Smile, Frog, <laughs> Zombie Stomp, and Jealous. There's just a tape labeled frog. Nice. Frog. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Time to turn the music off. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. Caller, you're talking to Forrest Nash. <laughs> What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Are you calling to guess that scream? <laughs> Slow night. Shouldn't you be working? <laughs> yeah, there's some funny choices in this game. I mean, since we're going to be trying to get everyone killed, let's just be the biggest douchebag we can. Yeah. Leslie, I've got to say I'm always happy to have a caller, but uh, shouldn't our 911 operator and police dispatcher be minding the phone? I found a body. I need your help. 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty 
sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not going to be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Ghost, <laughs> I really don't think this is a prank. Also, sound going through okay? I mean, on my end it is. Though Discord's being fucky here and there. Yeah. I want to wait for Book Corman Zanju to say something. Yeah. Are you sure? It's a bit low on my end. Okay. Oh, yeah, and Zanju, since I don't think I saw you over there, uh, if you have time, uh, as, as you can see in the stream title, I have also started uh, streaming on my own. Yeah, we forced Hatchet to start streaming. That's not exactly what happened, but yeah, I've started streaming on my own, so if you have time or want to check out what I've been doing, I'd appreciate a follow over there. Yeah. I've mostly just been doing Elder Scrolls stuff, Skyrim and Oblivion and the like. Yeah. Uh, also, also, Hatchet, I, my two choices are, are you serious? Or you should call the sheriff. <laughs> you should call the sheriff. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. You know what? I'm going to have Daryl be on my desk. I get that way he's near the microphone. That's never happened <laughs> Instead of being in my chair. The station and I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's I'm sorry. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but <laughs> for the other officers, is there anyone else at the station? Or the two ant choices? I think the top one's the most belligerent. I don't, I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or whatever cops are supposed to do? No. I checked everywhere. <laughs> no, it wouldn't Martina have better be chair for sure. But she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. <sighs> Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie. Do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. <laughs> Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. <laughs> I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's going to man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. <laughs> I mean, no, this is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you can count <laughs> the on me. little one's through. You intend to kill everyone. Also, interesting, so that's why he needed to handle the 911 calls. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, but this is a terrible idea. What on earth made you think to do that? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. <laughs> well, no what? one. Like an interview. You ask no, but one of them's just passed out. Oh. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews. They sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there the only are question two is can we actually kill Leslie? Work together. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have some on the job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. 
Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. Try to break down the door, find another way into the cell, find another set of keys. <laughs> Let's see, I think the least the least helpful there, I think, is break down the door. <laughs> I want to hear them actually try. Any chance you could break down the door? It's a holding cell, Forrest. These doors <laughs> aren't budging for anybody. Find another way into the cell or find another set of keys? It's obviously find another way into the cell. Yeah. Is there another way into the holding cell that you can see? It wouldn't be much of a holding cell if it had a back door. <laughs> uh, uh, just walk away now. <laughs> Let's play one of these tapes. No, not yet. There's got to be another yeah. set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only ones. Trust me, I'm going to play the American one first yeah, this time. There must be another set. Where might another set be? Check the officer's desk. Check Sheriff Matthews. Yeah, just move a corpse. Yeah, go, go fill up the corpse, lady. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. <laughs> I don't even know what that was supposed to be. I, 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 th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? Point sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle this all night. I think we can handle this. I'm quitting cave fam if this is a prank. Yep. Yep. That's the most belligerent. <laughs> I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just gonna sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. It's the right thing to do. You're leaving? We're on our own? Yeah. <laughs> that one. You mean we're gonna be on our own? Just Peggy and me, and no one else, responding to emergency calls. You'll be fine. You and Peggy just work together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. This No, no way. This can't be. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? With that mask. How the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? Okay. He's coming this Let's way. Let's get real. Stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Let's get real, Leslie. Have you never heard of copycat killers? Yes, come on. You need to focus. Definitely need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think. 
Run for it, hide in the station, take a police cruiser. Let's see. The least helpful option there is run for it. You need to run for it. The whistling man might break through the door. We can't run for it. Deputy Martinez isn't even conscious. Leave him behind. Run to Henderson on foot? Yes. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh, just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But... Wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Take Sheriff Matthews' gun. Take Deputy Martinez' gun. Take the bloody gun. Ah, so his. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Is there a weapon lock up? Can you see any other weapons? I think the bottom one's the least helpful. Yeah. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. What should I take? Now, if you want to be the least helpful, since they're wearing a mask, it would be the pepper spray. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so, like, the mask has to have eye holes. Yeah. Which one? Well, the, the taser did defeat them last time, so that's out of the question. Yeah, so, no taser. Then, yeah, take the pepper spray. Pepper spray should be easy to use and carry. Take that. Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. Do you hear that? Yes. No. <laughs> Discord. Do I have my VPN active? Is that what's causing this? I swear to fuck if you do. No, VPN is not active. Discord's just being a twat. Okay. <laughs> uh. No? No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Can you still see the West Side Man? Maybe the freak left? Be careful. <laughs> uh. Uh, maybe the freak left? Maybe the freak decided to up and leave. Language. Maybe. I think that may be wishful thinking. But I can't see him out there anymore, so... Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. So, as for the mask with eye holes, yep. I've actually had masks Are that look sure like there's eye holes, Leslie? but there's eye hole Child protectors like on present, it. Right? Oh, so, yeah. I mean, so if they have that, pepper spray okay. can do shit. You're hooked into dispatch now, <laughs> so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck, Leslie. With explanation mark. Or good luck, Leslie, with three dots. <laughs> good luck, Leslie, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Well, good luck. This is the part where the killer comes out of nowhere, isn't it? You know, I've got to say, <laughs> this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Oh, I think they've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. Hello, we're here over 10-4. Uh, uh, the least professional is hello. Hello, Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. We did. 
Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Hold it. Let me go. Martinez. God damn it. Okay, so we couldn't get Leslie to, to survive, but we did get Martinez dead. <laughs> he didn't even try to respond in those quick things. No, because that's technically being a dick. <laughs> True. Yeah, just like standing there blankly staring at Peggy. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you, did get, you away? get away? Hold it together. Oh wait, no, hold it together is the probably the rudest. Leslie, you need to hold it together right now. Forest. He slit her throat. You need to get to Henderson, Leslie. Nice. We can't let this happen again. What? Peggy's right. We've all got our part to play now. How long do you think it's going to take? <laughs> I hope Peggy gets Gallo mad. Going to get mad at you for not answering. It's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. That long, we'll do our best. You better floor it. You better floor it. You keep that pedal to the floor, then. We'll see when you're back. Thank you. I'll be back as fast as I can. All right. out of range soon. I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Yeah. Alright, before we continue, so I was right there wearing a mask that has eye hole protectors. So Well it's like here, good night. Alright, good night, Zanju. Yeah. Have have a good night, Zanju. So that definitely goes to tell me <laughs> that Yeah anything to do with the eyes you're not gonna hurt them <laughs> yeah <laughs> try not to crash <laughs> yeah, try, not to crash. try not to crash we uh we need you back in one piece good luck leslie <sighs> mm. folks you heard it here we've got a killer on the streets of gallows creek tonight please make sure to stay safe and leslie we're counting on you. We're going to get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. But no pressure, Leslie. <laughs> another hit record for you all to enjoy. No, fuck it. They don't get the song. This name of the song. This is what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know. I know. I just. <sighs> Who is this whistling man character? In here? He was a serial killer back in the fifties. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling. Killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just did. Okay, what happened to him? And he's coming back tonight. So we're screwed. <laughs> so we're screwed. I'm pretty sure there was a motive. Because isn't there like always a motive for all stereo killers? In some given way? No. No, it's not. No, there's, like, either there's no, uh, like, obvious motive, or, like, some people literally have no, like, wow. particular yeah. reason to do their actions. They're just like, hmm. Oh, there's, like, that one meme that I saw for Finance of Freddy's, looks like, where William Afton just takes a sip of tea, unsi stops drinking tea, says, 
I'm gonna go kill some kids today. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting to come in, too. Do, do I always just come in at the worst possible moment? Probably. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of those, so it's like sample selection bias. Yeah. So bright, just a magical woman. Yeah, we're killing everyone this time. No, no, I think Bright's just a disaster. So it's more likely for you to walk in when there's a disaster. Anyway, it's been a while since uh, we've had we you've joined us for streams, Jerry. Yeah, lately I've had very giant shit. <laughs> That's one way to go about it. Saying you were okay. not here. Book says Bright is a magical screwed. disaster woman. Sounds like we're screwed. Well, I agree with Probably Book not. One. Police chased him up to Alice Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And then, was, well, I don't think well, Bright is stupid. It was on this night, Sometimes actually, I think she's stupid. The police cornered him and he jumped into the river. His body and was he never is found. Definitely a disaster. So is he alive? Purposely yeah, and What's the story? accidentally the story destroying is he's things. biding his time, <laughs> waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. Wait, magical and disaster. Are you at an Absol Bright? No, I'm not. I'm not a furry. Anyways, we'll do our best. Guess we'll find out. So we're screwed. <laughs> we doubled down so saying we're so, so we're screwed. We can double Doubling down. down. <laughs> yeah. So we're screwed. Because it sounds like we're screwed. We're not screwed. Things just aren't great right now. I am not bookworm. At least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get? I don't know what an absol is. Thursday, but if they're anything like a cat cowbird, I guess it's right. Now? 35. Not 30, yet. 100. Well, oh my god. Is, uh, Pokemon no, known as the disaster people. Pokemon. I am grabbing yeah. you right now. 35 at oh, best. Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners. 35? That's nothing. Uh, there we go. There's one Absol. 35. That's nothing. That's like These are technically all at insults <laughs> kind of yeah here's an absol from the anime nothing oh oh yeah that's definitely one of them that i said smash to not nothing They're oh people. people who like tuning into our show and what's the population of gallows creek i don't know exactly a little over a thousand oh how many did you get before you know before my career exploded and i Ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet, I guess. Yeah. I guess we're going to learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay. Right? Yeah. Hello, caller. What are you you're doing? I was being slow. Is everything uh, all right? Ah! <sighs> Kinky. Okay, uh, who is this? No. You, uh, hello. <laughs> hello. What? I just want to have one pity fuck with the killer. No. Okay. <laughs> What's your name and why are you calling in? Oh my god. You you don't have to do this. Do you accept requests? <laughs> yes, that one. You don't have to do this. Do you 
no, Jerry, you request. see, we're trying to be the biggest assholes names, possible. Sacrifice to us. I, I mean, me. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Or I'll cut your face off. Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to deal with them. Oh. We also want a mega gold. <laughs> Come on, kids. You little shits. Okay, yeah. I'll do it. You little shits. You little shits. Wait. <laughs> this is actually challenging. Like, it's not. It's it's not being a dick. If you're being a dick to dick. So in that case, okay, I'll do it. Let's okay, scare them. So, cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. Uh, a wise choice. See you soon, Morris Nash. Needless to say, Probably should have just I said won't this actually be going shits. out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. And none of you should be going out tonight either. They'll all be That's dead. Actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Wait, there's one that's called Stab in the Back? Oh, Stab in the Twilight? Do that one. <laughs> Peggy. What the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. Damn it. <laughs> Fucking loser. <laughs> we have a call waiting. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. Yeah. What's your name? And what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. Oh, first time we're gonna kill someone. Cops aren't coming. The sheriff is dead. <laughs> sheriff is dead. I'm sorry, Sandra, but the sheriff is dead. We're trying to get. <laughs> sorry, Jerry. We're being an asshole. What? <laughs> we're literally trying to get everyone killed. It's actually happening. Where, where are you now? A jazz run? Bad night to go out for a run. Out for a run. <laughs> yes, that one. I'm sorry, but you really picked a bad night to go out for a run. I know that now, baby. That's why I jazz ran back to my car. But I dropped my keys somewhere along the way. I never locked the door, Lucy. I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Can you go back and find your keys? Sound like you lost them. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> Is there anywhere else you can go? <laughs> Sounds like you lost them. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> Sounds like you lost them. I think you'll be fine. Oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. Oh. Look, I don't know what it's about cars, but I gotta start this engine without the keys. And you're gonna have to help me. Wait, wait, wait. I don't. Uh, if it helps. Damn it, Buster. I'll call you back when I find it. It's good. 
guy. Listening to 189.16. Yes, that's the point. Scream. We will kill everyone. Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. I do really love her accent, though. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. Savior or it's Angel weird. of Death. I asked them about it once. Well, they if you think really about it, Angel of Death is, is a savior. Anyway, they take you we'll away. You they save you from life the itself. The are out the door and down the hall. Your reasoning is trash. Bookworms says true. <laughs> Bookworms reasoning is trash too. Are you gonna do a run where you try to help people? I oh, know we already we already completed the game where we're trying to help people. Oh. Saved literally everyone. Now we're gonna now we're gonna kill everyone. Move <laughs> for Jesus. There's a new savior in town. Instead of universalism, it's ununiversalism. Everyone die. Now this has to be important. Twins, I brought your car theft magazine. Those hero rhinoceros are sitting right. I need something to read. Pray for me. Oh, it's going to be in the bathroom. I actually never got the actual book, and I just did trial and error for Sandra. So I actually did get the achievement for killing her. Uh. This looks useful. Why is it backwards? I, I, I need it frontwards. Why is it backwards? You can flip things around. Can't you? No. Oh, you could. I can move it between hands. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Damn it. I'm trying to flip it over by throwing it. I don't think it's that's not made to flip over. Ha! <laughs> oh. Oh. You were <laughs> saying? <laughs> you find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? Damn it. Fucking wire, stop connecting to my chair. How do we start this baby? Okay. Let's see. So you just hit the steering wheel with a hammer. Yes! Hit the steering wheel with a hammer. Hit the steering wheel with the hammer. Oh my god. Oh my god! He's looking at the car now. Come on, tell me what to do. Unscrew the steering column. That's before step one, so. Unscrew the steering column. Alright. Jet turn. Jet turn. One, two, one, two. Come on. How long are these screws? Okay. You're doing great. Tell me exactly what you say to your jazz breathing. Don't panic. You know what? That but, might work. Well, again, trying to be the least caring as possible. So just say, tell me exactly what you see. Tell me exactly what you see. Brown wire. 
uh, well, it says nothing about brown wires in this, so... <laughs> oh, no. Yep, strip the brown and green wires and twist them together. Let's get some results. We take a brown and a green, a twist, and... Ah! That's not the results we want. There we go. <laughs> She's the it. I'm no car mechanic. Jazz Heaven. I'm so sorry, Sandra. Jazz Heaven. Well, uh, let's just hope she is jazz flying up to heaven. Forest? <laughs> Couldn't help myself. <sighs> Folks, Gallows Creek just lost one of its own. Everyone, please stay home. Stay home, stay safe, and stay tuned. This next track is dedicated to Sandra. Taken too soon. I was hoping... I was hoping when she hit the fucking... I still can't believe this is happening. Hit the right. steering wheel with the hammer that the airbag would deploy. <laughs> What do you mean? What were you trying Gallows to say, Jerry? Is a miserable place to live. Really? I don't remember. Miserable? Uh, it's nothing personal. It's a sad place on Earth. Peggy, be honest. <laughs> it's a sad place on Earth. That's right, Peggy. Miserable. It's a sad place on Earth. Well, I like it here. People are polite and... Uh... Dead. Stab happy. <laughs> Don't be awful for us. <laughs> Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Some folks have been okay. You don't notice the stink after a while. <laughs> that one. After a while, you don't even. What are we in smell? California? I guess that's nice. Smell? What the? There's no smell. <laughs> You've lived here your whole life, Peggy. You wouldn't recognize it by now. Anyway, I'm surprised Jerry's not even mad at me for what I said. But Leslie gets back soon. Well, you said you already beat it, so. Can we at this least your call out that run. stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, I was only saying that California be smells because the air quality is not that great there, if I remember correctly. From hearing from other YouTubers who went uh, there. Caller on line one. <laughs> Pretty sure you New York is worse. Oh yeah, definitely New York's worse. <laughs> when you're ready, shut the music off. Evening caller, this is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16. Don't know if Seattle's Scream. worse or it's just and because it's always raining there. True. No. 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 Hello, Brian. Hi Hello, Brian Ponty. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. <laughs> it's just like a pyramid of the name. <laughs> just say hello, Brian. Hello, Brian. What have you got to say about what's happening? Oh, I'm so sad that Deputy Martinez didn't make it. I saw her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Just terrible. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to thank you for doing your best. So I'm yeah. sending you yeah, that's what we're doing. forms for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Just a little something to look forward to when all this blows. I hope you're not literally wow. sending it while Brian the Ponty killer is out there. Ponty's Pizza. I want to see if I can do this. You. you really don't have to, though. Oh, right. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals. No, no, that's that kind of pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Poor choice of words. Uh, <laughs> wow. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that didn't come out right. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say.
We have no right to say that. Say it. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry for it. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this Yeah, just press the button to cut him off. Beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just no! got to one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Well, for Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsor. Oh, uh, yeah. You know how to play an ad, right? Now you both get to hear a politician ad. Sure. Oh, no. You ready? Yeah. Done. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man. Oh, a God, it's Christian loud. and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. Well, believe in keeping a well, good man dead, out of so. a job. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town? Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. I like the name Linda Cartwright. Name it reminds Teddy me Gallows of... Jr. And I approve this mm. One who I really God, like that my dad liked. 100%. Amanda. Great A asshole. Well, Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Oh, he set <laughs> the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Don't you well, guys just well, love that ad? That reminds me that every vote Fuck matters. You. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean Bam. take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's find out who's got I love Peggy. Vote. Welcome to the screen. Peggy is the highlight of this game. Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. Up uh, next Good person job. for murdering. This guy just broke in downstairs. And... Wait. Forrest Nash. Fair book. I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Leslie I left me in not. charge. I am 9 11. You know what? Since you're I, trying to be an asshole, do the last one. I, instead, like, of, yeah, fuck you. instead of saying 9 1 1, I said I am 9 11. <laughs> My god. <laughs> no, that's you saying I am 9 1 1. Yeah, no, Bright, bright accidentally is said. The bottom one. But no. yeah, she was, she was the bottom one. <laughs> that was the worst thing I've ever pro probably said. Just me saying, I am 9 11. <laughs> right? It is I'm terror. I'm guessing you've not been tuned in to our show tonight. Damn it, son. What does that have to do with anything? Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an Fair anonymous book. source, if that's a concern. Does he realize he's on? True. <laughs> you're fucking live. Yeah, we're live on air. Just tell me what's happening. <laughs> you know what? You're an asshole. Say we're live on air. True. We're live I'm... on the air. Oh. Anything we say can Sorry, Hatchet. will be broadcast. Live on I wonder if they're hearing this. Yeah, there's a lot happening tonight. 
You said someone broke in. Uh, this thing, this thing, he said stop, I started clicking Some faster. <laughs> just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teen. They get worse every year. Oh no, he's gonna get killed from stupid. Wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. I don't think it's a teen, and oh, now he's back. back. <laughs> yeah. And Hatchet, what do you think? Yeah. Now he's back seems like the most asshole mocking thing to do. Maurice, and I don't perfect. know what's going on, but he's back. The Whistling Man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. <laughs> that confirmed it. <laughs> they think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. They didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Oh my god, he anyway, is that stupid. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Can you get out of there? Think you can take the whistling man? You know what? Since he's an asshole, we'll just lead him to the death. Yep, let's have him try, try to, to die. <laughs> Book says I won't feel bad that this guy dies. Man? Sure. Son, I am 55 years old. If this freak killed Sheriff Matthews, <laughs> I don't like my chances. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinet. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it oh, would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here <laughs> is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms with different extensions. So we Oh, uh, we just them. send the killer we'll straight the killer to the room, the room he's in. And <laughs> get an exclusive interview with the killer. Yes, that one. And get an exclusive interview with the killer. That could be interesting. No, I mean we just make a distraction. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Sorry, <laughs> Peggy and I were just trying to figure out. You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're going to need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. What? Did he just hang up on you? Damn it. <laughs> you, you don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax <laughs> machine. Go to the fax machine. Don't worry, sir. I get a we'll fax machine down. number. Where's the fax machine? I'll pick up the map then. Uh, I'll say nothing. Go, Forrest. The fax <laughs> machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. This must be it. Okay. Fax machines were pretty amazing for their time. Yeah, yeah. but we're gonna murder him. <laughs> That's a completely irrelevant statement. Damn. <laughs> hey, did you get the fax? Says, fax? Fax machines were pretty cool for their time. <laughs> and Bright says, yeah, but we're gonna murder him. <laughs> Yes, I have. I lost it. 
<laughs> it's right here, but I say I lost it. How could you, how could you possibly lose it? Do it. I lost it. Run it. How did you lose it? The fax machine is just down the hall. Do you, um, I mean, do you think we could get him to send it again? <laughs> I'm sure he'll be more than accommodating. I like sarcastic Peggy, I have to say. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? You can you send it again? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Can you send it again? Can you send it again? I feel like this She's is even beyond my asshole. Fine. Fine. Just hurry. It's getting close. Calm down. I'll be right back. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my facts? All right, now we gotta say we got it. Yeah, we got it right here. Good. Yeah. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. That. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. His plan. Better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Call oh, the boardroom. Boardroom. Yeah. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. The boardroom. Don't be a horse's ass. Forrest, this is no time for jokes. Where should I call? <laughs> Damn it. Uh... Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? What's the room? Mm. Uh... Is literally next to the office. Yeah. Well, kitchen's gonna take longer. I guess go to the kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah, that makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. We should have saved yes, before this in case Calling? we accidentally keep yeah. him alive. There's another area where you can tell him to hide in the room. We're trying to lock him in. Oh, okay. So he'll I die. <laughs> He's actually heading to my office. You can thank me later. Yes. Don't worry, Maurice. You can thank me when you're safely home. Thank you. It's your producer I'll be crediting if I make it through this. <laughs> the coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV. Won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be. Fine. Hopefully not. But now, what do we do? I'm sure he'll trip and way for him to get past that barricade. What do you do mean? Do an anime I fall the onto the killer? Man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could. Oh. Calling coming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I don't think I'll ever be ready for this stuff. Don't worry, Forrest. You've got this. I've got Mr. Russell on the line. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. Not quickly, or quietly. Maybe play dead? Can you lock can him, you in, a lock room? him in a room? <laughs> play dead. What if you played dead? Maybe the killer would walk off and you could get out after him. Nash, he 
knows I'm not dead. <laughs> That's the whole reason he's here. To kill me. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably <laughs> buy you time enough, right? Maybe. The damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... <laughs> wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? No. Reggie would love but that. Grab my thing what have you got back there? Juicy watch. secrets about outer space? That's not the time, Pe uh, Peggy. Hey, You're a conspiracy you fan, Peggy. <laughs> Obviously the bottom one. Also, what were you trying to say, Cherry? You were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. I think Jerry's speaking to Spood. Yeah, oh, okay. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in, we can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my God, Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Okay. Is there any TV in there? Use yourself as bait. Use a radio. Actually, sounds radio. very uh, smart. Uh, maybe you could use yourself as bait. Absolutely not. Are you sure you can't? <laughs> Don't be a horse's ass. Alrighty then. New plan. Is there a TV in there? Radio! Is there a TV in that room? Maybe that could draw him in. Ah, of course. I turn it up, he comes in, and I get my head chopped off. Think of something else. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no We're radio trying to be in an ass, Jerry. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. Is he still in the office? I hope he's a 189.16 to scream fan. <laughs> yeah, I do that one. I'm glad you got a radio fan there. Does he listen to 189.16, the scream? Gallows Creek's best and only late night Colin show. Jesus, Nash. I'd expect that level of self advertisement from Brian Ponty, not you. <laughs> Ponty Forrest. Oh, That's fuck lovely. you. Will you idiots focus now? His portable radio should still be here. Should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted. Search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town. Don't get excited yet. <laughs> That's yeah. That would be obvious. There's still a lot to do before we celebrate. Let's just see how it goes first. What do you mean? He's not out of there yet. We still gotta find the radio, unblock the stairs. I know, but we've got a plan for how to do that, and, oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming Keep together. Keep yelling, why don't you? I'm just going to turn it <laughs> on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Uh, Maurice, what happened? Damn it, did the killer hear that? You should have turned it down, Maurice. <laughs> you should have turned yeah. it down, Maurice. Do you think I don't know that? Shit. Let me check the security cameras. Okay. He's still creeping around the other side of the floor. Thank God. That was close. We need to be careful with that radio. Have this stupid thing turned up. How am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead. You just. Oh, 
That's a good point. But wait, where the radio? We can just be quiet until you're ready. Uh, if you can do that, then yeah, sure. One eighty nine by oh. sixteen. Now even when I know something for a fact, I like to double check. But after your earlier self advertisement, Nash, I don't think that's necessary. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now. I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? <laughs> call uh, the boardroom. The that'll be right next to the editor's office, that so it doesn't work. kill him. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. Make the call. I'm sure. Make the call. Kill him. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, so here's the thing, when it tells us to go quiet, I can mess with the soundboard. So I'm going to turn on the music. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'll impersonate Mr. Russell. I'll give fake <laughs> advice. I'll call the chill killer and jackass. You know, call the okay. killer and jackass. Well, yeah, but again, we'd be being mean to an asshole. I'll Top impersonate one. Mr. Russell. I'm going to do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak the slip. What a great plan this is, Pearl! Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am the... Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet. That'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the killer's going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Well, we can. I think it'd be. F kept me alive so far. I think it'd be Ash, funny if you put them under the desk. What do you reckon? No desk. Hide under the desk. All right. It. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man. I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive. Come on down, whistling man. Come and get a knuckle sandwich. Thought the soundboard would work, but apparently not. Yeah, and you missed your chance to say something oh, before shit. you. Why'd I go under this goddamn oh. desk? Oh! Shut up. No, nope, Morris will die. Morris, he's, he's gone dead out of print. Yeah, what? he's out of print. <laughs> out of print. <sighs> Let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. I think that would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> Folks, we'll be back soon. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call after this next track well this is gonna be a long night oh really I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me I could ask you some questions to speed things along you're gonna interview me Are you sure about that you're not so scary besides we've been working together like a week now I have burnt down 420 mental asylums What do you want to know? I'll regret this, but okay. 
Maybe I like being a mystery. Hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> book, uh, bookworm? They wanted to keep me inside the mental asylum, but I kept saying no and burnt it to the ground with all the people inside. We're moving on. <laughs> I guess the metal one. I guess. Uh, I'll regret I think they're this. gonna leave and do my uh, question one. Laundry. Tell All right. See you me. later, Jerry. Okay. What? Have a good night, Jerry. Thanks hey, for Mr. coming by. Okay. It was fun. Did <laughs> right, anyone so... move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I. Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. That's depressing. Uh, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. You're sorry? Why did you do it? <laughs> don't be sorry. I'm not. <laughs> Let's accuse her of murder. <laughs> yeah. You're sorry? Why did you do it? Of course not. I only. I'm just messing with you. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You are. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. All right. Before I continue, I want to go get some alcohol. Okay. You want to pause the game first? Stop making a giant mess on my bed. <laughs> oh shit. I was going to get myself Stop. a drink, but now I gotta get a stop on my bed. No, it's his bed. You you just are allowed on Buster's bed. Very good. Exactly. Alright, I'm back. Book says, no, it's his bed. You just are allowed on Buster's bed. That's all. Also, uh... I need to erase this from my mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Also, I received this for free from friends because of the whole money scenario. I thought Mountain Dew alcohol would taste like shit. Not bad. Okay. It's just it's just it's slightly bitter, but it's it still tastes like Mountain Dew. What, you've never known that there's soda alcohols, bu uh, bookworm? <laughs> yeah, the three flavors I was given was regular, Baja Blast, and watermelon. Watermelon is my favorite. Then again, I've always liked watermelon. Hmm. Oh, what happened there? Oh, huh, what a coincidence. Yeah, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. And, well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. Yeah, Matt and a soda book. So bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. As if that's not something Book anyway, said. Mr. Weaver got sick one day and... 
My mom didn't last yeah, long after no, you went. Yeah, no, said, oh, uh, Mountain Dew Don't is soda. Egg. Thought it was yeah, an so energy drink for a sec. Be... Oh, okay. It's the okay. first thing I, I thought you said, though. I'm sorry. I'm no. defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Oh, fuck you. Okay. Down to the first floor. Then check the door. I always wonder what goes up there. So we can never actually go through that door. The roof, probably. A tape. Play on air. Really, Buck? Buck doing good work. Oh, uh, yeah, people did come by earlier today. Um, the kitchen is, you are able to, like, walk around in it. Uh, but, song before I play this, but, uh, the, the G15 for outlet that, the, uh, for, uh, the stove, uh, not the stove, oven, was, uh, uh, needed to be replaced and that's what caused the fire do you know what a uh, g15 is that sounds familiar let me look it up best way to describe it the way i was told uh is that it makes sure the power stops when you unplug something from the outlet like it'll if that's damaged power will keep going through and through and through constantly Literally, the first thing I see is stuff having to do with Dell computers. Oh. Eh. Whatever. But yeah, that's what it does. It basically makes there's not like a constant surge of electricity on that outlet area. I don't know. It it's basically regulates. Uh. And if that's damaged... You're, it's gonna overpower whatever it's connected to. Ah. Uh. This is an apartment, right? Sounds like your landlord did a shit job checking it. No, this is a house. <laughs> I'm in a house. <laughs> who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. Mm -hmm. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well... Turn the music off and play it. All right, Hatchet. You're going to listen to the best tape imaginable. You ready? Wait a minute. This is this is the fucking pizza guy, ain't it? Hello, Gallo Street. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for life. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. What was that N-word you were going to say, oh, Forrest? I did not enjoy that. <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm going to enjoy I... this. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's... what was that N-word you were going to say, there. Forrest? <laughs> what was that N-word you were going to say, Forrest? <sighs> Hello? There's no way the killer got from the newspaper to hear so quick. Moving on. <laughs> Bookworm caught on what I was making a joke to. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty common gag online. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's easily one of my favorite Let's go to a break. Formats. I need you for a second. Yeah. All right, folks. Like jokingly incriminate someone by... This one's Taking a quote from folks out there, <laughs> the screen hatchet. at a word that starts with N. Yeah. Neighbor! 
That was the first thing that came to my head. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. I'm being my accurate height for rest of stream. Okay. At least you made the short joke this time. <laughs> now you can't complain about us mocking you for the short jokes. I have accepted it at this point. So what Time is this to edit like that clip to cancel it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is a funny speed, or this is a funny challenge on how to play the game. Oh wait, can you even turn that off from this angle? <laughs> Alright, I've got it. Did we forget an ad or something? I don't know, it was buried in my work mail. I only just saw it. See what it says. Uh... Play me ASAP. Off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. But he wrote it in purple. And? Purple is Reggie's angry color. He only writes in purple when he's really pissed off. ...about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank. I don't want you as part of the issue. But Mrs. Thatcher, you know... I'll put it on. I hope it's nothing serious. friendship, Gina. Forrest, mate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest! You know, Roddy Snatcher? Big Roddy fan, we're old friends. I used to be a big deal. I used to be a... <laughs> I used to be a big deal, Peggy. I knew lots big of people. deal. I love Roddy. I Will Always Find You was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe he didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fan, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at K-Fan aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Mm. Oh yeah, when I'm doing this, I'm actually slower. Yeah. This is an insufferable challenge idea. Well, it's what we're doing now. It's hard to open doors while crouched. Come to think of it, how long were you planning on streaming? I'm going to beat this game. Like, do run, run, and see what time it is. I'm going to at I least mean, beat it. It's not going to take us long. Obviously. Didn't it take us a few hours the first time? Yes, but we're also going through it because we're missing a lot of dialogue. Well, true. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Okay, we're gonna actually gonna need this for later. That way, we don't have to go down here. Speed run strats since you've permanently crippled your legs. Yeah. This will just make everything go unbearably slowly. What we did for what? What's gonna look? Like, maybe an hour gameplay. It's gonna take, like, maybe two hours. <laughs> we just doubled the length because <laughs> we crouched. Please, just stop crouching at this point. Okay. <laughs> this is awful. Okay, the joke's over. Hey, or, or maybe it. only Let's do it while you're there. at your ah! table. Gallows Creek. Only at the I'm table. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much-needed treat. 
Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Is Roddy Snatcher an actual person? I doubt it. The bookworm? I wouldn't want to be a person with the name wow. Roddy Snatcher. Roddy's the best. He is. And, and be in the public line. We should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. <laughs> yes, I'm still crouched. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just still play it going later. Oh shoot! I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Yes. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight. Wait, can you still bump the mic from down here? This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. <laughs> yes, I can. Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Ten you know, hours looks like getting our for this game, I'd say no. Oh. Happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. We're night to celebrate, but I mean, it, it's not that happy today. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? This one? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not that happy today. Forrest. Nah, he's not wrong. And that brings me to my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so called killer. Bad idea, Murphy. Oh boy, here we go. Are you gonna kick his ass, Murphy? Yes. Are you Do gonna that. kick his ass, Murphy? God damn right! I'm gonna kick his ass! I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. Oh, no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Oh, we gotta play one of the commercials. All right, we'll play this one. Well, that worked, I guess. Yes, I managed to get it. Time to play a commercial. Did not make this place accessible for short people. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back. We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbins, firearms, fireworks, funnel cakes. <laughs> There's just so many pageants, and yeah, it sounded like that starting one shop. was. There's also a, a cat shop. And bait tattoo yes. face paint and puppets, pet and zoo, amaze and maze, maze, square dance. Oh my story, god, shut up. <laughs> 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 This sounds like one of like uh, the bits from Old Man Hack. <laughs> I am not this insufferable. I can see why it's world famous. We're gonna play it again, right? Oh, 
<laughs> I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. Also, That's it sounded right. like Come find one of the first the things they mentioned was a child beauty pageant, which is of a K -fam mug yeah, no. <sighs> set or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hello, are, are are you okay? Do you need help? Just say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Are are you still with us? Forrest? He called me. That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me. Jesus. Hey, listen, caller, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So Sure. <laughs> well. Well. We could lie. Now, let's be an honest douchebag. Well, you know, we learned a lot. Oh, God. <laughs> We're going to help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're going to be okay. I won't. Just calm down. No Tell promises. Where you are right now. What's your address? Don't worry. We promise to let you die. <laughs> Call a neighbor. Can you run away? Can you hide? Can you run away? Can you run out back? No. What if he's outside? Waiting for me. Oh, God. Call a neighbor. I feel like, can you hide when people... Help? Oh. No. Everyone's away tonight. Oh. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house. Yes. Oh god, this poor woman. Takeout coming in all night. Fun covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get Oh god. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's Oh god. I can't think. I I can't Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout! If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order also takeout Also wasted, but GTA style. Don't, don't worry, try to remember, don't be a child! Oh my god. <laughs> that one. <laughs> don't be a child, this is life or death! I can't do this! Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snack. Bullying people live on air. Specifically bullying people who are having a panic attack. So Hatchet. Yeah. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... So There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree. And you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponzi's Pizza. That's it, I think. Here's the thing. The actual answer... That that's it. That's it? it the actual answer is Ponzi's Pizza. You know, Forrest, just we, we have to call Ponzi's Pizza to the hell. We're not in Chicago. Let's get All going. Right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work take out client privilege what there was a lot of competition back in the day things got ugly it's a long story but what we can do is this we figure out where the frat boys order from call the takeout pretending to be from the frat place an order and include a note asking them to call the station <sighs> there's no other way is there not that i can see Oh yeah, I gotta get out of crouching. Uh, I hate this town. What is takeout client privilege? It means basically they can't reveal the identities of whoever 
bought from them. Oh. Wait, how is that a bad thing? You know, it's things like this. I don't know. You hate this town. Complain after you save her, Forrest. You got any suggestions? Book says takeout client privilege is just ugh. I thought that's what it meant. There. Unless Buckworm no saw us it's something just different. Slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? You're not getting in there tonight. We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... Uh... <sighs> I just have to look around. Because I'm pretty sure it's not a real thing, just made up for the game. Oh. Uh. It just sounds cringe to me. Uh. Yeah, if I remember correctly, really one trash. free beer for every uh, uh, point enough. that Gallows High Gallows wins Gallows by Gallows. in Tuesday's big game with every order. So here's the problem with that. Let's say, like, um, they get, like, 72 points o over from the other team. That would be 72 beers per order. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's literally just a play on uh, attorney-client privilege. But, but we applied to. Hey, find anything useful? Yeah. I'll wing it. I'll look again. What am I looking for again? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Uh, no. <laughs> Let's make it. Right. Time to turn the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Okay, so we can either do Grilling Spree or Chalupa Cabra. Okay, right. Yes. Given what you know about me, which one do you think I would go for first? Grilling Spree? <sighs> oh, the bottom. Literally earlier today. The cryptid. All right. Book knows me better than you. Book's my new butt buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, if Bookworm's your new butt buddy, they're also my butt buddy. Nah, I'm signing out of the contract. <laughs> hey, do frat man calling. Frat man? <laughs> do hey, dude. Hey, dude. Book says What's no, going you on? Right. What do you want? I want that burrito. A big burrito. For my frat house brothers. Okay. Address. Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Same place? Oh, yeah. Have it here. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? Um, yeah, we'll do it. Hey, did we fucked up? And... Now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Oh, unless this, it goes to the wrong frat house. Maybe. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No. Wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. Equally awful, equally good. He had to pick equally awful is the best answer. Equally awful? You mean equally awful? No, equally good. But if I had to order, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right. So I many frat houses exist in a college. town of a thousand? Uh, a thousand yeah. frat houses. One people. person for frat or house. <laughs> really, really good nachos. It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Okay, Forrest. Shut the music off. 
Angus. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Uh, this is Dudley from the Brotherly Fraternity of Engineers. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> I have a note to call you. Hey, weird question. Uh, but you aren't the only ones on your street tonight, are you? No, sir. Uh, I think everyone on the street is in tonight. Uh, yeffers. Uh, I've just visually confirmed it. Uh, I see cars in the driveways and a couple of lights on. Uh, everyone's in. Yeah. Oh. And you've not been throwing a loud party all night, have you? I certainly hope we haven't disturbed our neighbors. Uh, why do you ask, sir? Forrest, we have a new call coming in. Forrest, line two. Hello. You're live on 189.16, The Stream. Forrest, it's the whistling man. He's at the door. He's... Oh, my God. It's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk. She did. Now, I'm kind of wondering what would happen if you went to the other place. Probably basically the same thing. Yeah, probably. God, oh dear God, poor Virginia. This was your idea. I guess takeout here is. I guess takeout here oh. is. Yeah, we're sticking to the sh awful jokes at the end of people dying. I guess the takeout here is to die for. Forrest, what the hell? That that doesn't even make sense. A swing and a miss. <laughs> to everyone listening, I know things look bad, but please don't lose faith. We will stop this whistling man. No, we I won't. Think Virginia may have just given us the clue we need. What was that about Clive? I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Estes. Clive. But your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. Oh, it could save lives. Quiet. In the meantime, <laughs> yeah. it looks like we have another caller. If any Hello, of you know a suspicious Clive, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town. I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. Wait for it. How are you holding up? Yeah, I'm guessing. Somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Oh, what small business do you own? You sure are up late. Good for you, friend. <laughs> Good for you, friend. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really living the American dream. <laughs> Here in my business. <laughs> What's your, what is your business anyway? You must really, really you love your really, work. Really, really love your work. You must really, really love your work. Oh, I do. My small business really is my whole world. <laughs> What's your small business? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Porsche's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! <laughs> I wonder what would have happened if we called Ponty's instead. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure are, caller. No. What's your name? <laughs> first tonight. Name's Stein, and I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting 
for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. That's stupid. Take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? <laughs> yes, that's why I'm calling. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Go hold in your parents. Do you really need to ask? Stay and wait. Oh. Uh, I wasn't paying attention because I looked on Twitter. What? There's a guy in this maze right here. Uh, I'm guessing at the tree right here. Oh, okay. uh, waiting for uh, the, the girl to show up. Uh, they haven't showed up yet. And they're saying, should we... Should I, like... Call them up or whatever. I have now just realized this. On the map, there's one area that looks like a dude. <laughs> no, even more so. A dude with a throbbing penis. Oh my god, yes. Also, stay and wait. Hopefully he dies. It's his book. Okay, so there we go. Ah, what the hell. Stay and wait. Forrest, that's a terrible idea. Eugene, please go home. Your parents must be worried sick. My parents are dead, actually, but, uh... Oh. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. A mischief, after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. Good talk. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. Well, Molly's dead. Oh, uh, not Molly's dead. De Eugene's the dead. Night of my life. Not the worst. Well, good. Uh, bad news. Uh, you won't see Molly anymore. Good news. You'll be reunited with your parents. <laughs> Run through the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't you just <laughs> run through the walls? It's only corn. It wouldn't be the maze maze if you could just walk through walls, Forrest. She's right. Listen, Eugene, breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. I seriously doubt we can get this all done in one night. To get in through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. We're actually she not that here. far off. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she this has to be about halfway through the game. Like, this is still before I showed up last time. Why well, should change and her there, mind? Is it maze maze? Please. And there was several, like... I, I, I want to say at least three or four hours after Maybe I came. we should call Barbara then? If she's so Wait, big no. on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh. Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. <laughs> Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Never does What I'm seeing for most walkthroughs right now for videos, it's only up to four hours. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Through's commonly cut out a lot. See, there's one... Hold on, I want to look at the... Colors, you got one, and two is the prank color. We got three, uh, four, four. I'm gonna ignore Ponty. Okay, so we got one. Let me do it again. We got one, two, 
three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Uh, eight. And eight's the quickest, you just piss off the final... Piss off the killer and she kills him. Okay. Uh, let's see, what color are we on right now? We're on four. We're halfway through. Like he said. And we don't have to go downstairs. Because we already had the map. <laughs> so yeah, it's not going to take long. What it's shown is like for walkthroughs is like four hours. When you're ready, shut the music off. Especially since we're cutting out dialogue by killing them. It's going to be a lot quicker. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. So we can actually probably Eugene, finish this tonight. You're back on air. <sighs> I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad. Facing a tractor stack. Okay, say one. There are hay bales painted gold. On oh, they're right side. on. Oh, they're on the penis. Okay. What would the worst way to go? Well, oh, well, we need him to go up. So going down would be bad. Yeah. Okay, so... If he's probably heading over in this direction, it would be right. Yeah. Go right. Jesus! Oh, shit! He's cutting through the walls! Where do I go? Go backwards towards them. Go forward. I'll go forward. Go no. forward! Okay! I'm going! Please! No! You don't have to do this! Sick. Poor kid, stupid kid. I guess that what loves. I guess that's what love does. It makes us fall to pieces. I just don't, Forrest. Okay, don't. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Oh. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Report Next a Clive to stay, stay alive. <laughs> Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you, thank you, thank you? <laughs> Hatchet, choose one, two, or three. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Uh, Stop you? going on Twitter. <clears throat> All right, it's thank you, thank you, exclamation mark, or thank you, question mark. 
do them at all. Okay. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune for us? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Peggy. Why? Fair enough. <laughs> That you there, Hatchet? I guess yell at her. I don't know. <laughs> you all right? That's a bit extreme, isn't it? Brad was uh -huh. annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. <laughs> Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. Yeah, hold on, I'm gonna turn my fan on. All right, there's no fan sounds coming through, right? Uh, no. Okay. Nice speech. Say goodbye to your legs. What the fuck was that? Anyways, what do we do then? Sorry about Brad. For shame, Peggy. For shame. <laughs> I guess that one. For shame, Peggy. For shame. I know. Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Now we all wait. The songs to request. Why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Yeah, fuck. I'm gonna start doing the the short thing. It does. I suppose I should take this call. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. What's wrong? Hello again, Mr. Dojo. <laughs> Go, Mr. Dojo. Oh, the killer got me, man. I. Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? Ah, uh, that's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn Mason. You came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight. Oh, oh, goddamn! I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. 
Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Fire department, get more fire engines. Old man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. You know what? We're gonna kill an old person. Okay. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Jericho. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. And we wait. And wait. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Old man Jericho wasn't fast enough. I don't know why I even mentioned him, but I did. The plant burned down. It collapsed. So Murphy is... Poor Fernando is going to be crushed. Uh, well, Murphy's dead. Terrible way to go. His father died a hero. Just like his dad. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Fernando will be crushed. Just like his dad. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> poor kid. Forrest, that... I wasn't trying to set you up for a punchline. No, I know. Ugh. Murphy, I promise we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. Peggy, it's going to be our... Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. All right, folks, another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. Oh, God. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers... It's, it's the politician hatchet. The Gallows Creek I don't know. ...during this awful time. Oh. It's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founder, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Oh my god. Alright, thanks, Teddy. Teddy, stop. You're a prick, Teddy. Can we call a politician a prick? Uh, yes. <laughs> I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, 
which employs over 200. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Emergency, not problem. The whistling man. Your family's waste plant burned? Oh, yeah. That was his family's waste plant. Oh. Your family waste plant just burned down? So now we have nowhere to dump our garbage? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Oh, fuck Don't you, you dare Teddy. speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. He'll die. Moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Oh my gosh, yeah, Hatchet, you're gonna love this tape. Okay. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then, step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. The discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. And the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS tapes. The Tornado Technique and Karate Love Me. Call today! Jesus, you know, after what happened with Murphy, I think... Yeah, we should take that out of rotation. Uh, kind of a shame, though. It is pretty fun. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Let's just get to the show. Apologies, folks. We must have left that tape in rotation by accident. I think it's fair to say that's one deal you can skip. But what you can't skip is what our next caller has to say. Caller on line one. So, what do you think about that ad, Hatchet? It was a thing. Don't you want to have the wisdom of a bullfrog? No. <laughs> or the speed of a tuna. <laughs> on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hey, Big Shot, hit the button and take the call. Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friend. I, I think he's killed some of them already. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Can you run? Can you fight back? Can you fight back? Do you have any kind of weapon with you? Something that might let you fight back? Oh my god. Oh my god. Stay with me, kid. Focus. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me. What's your name? 
Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Uh, go in the closet. It's where the gays go. Go to the closet. Okay, I'll... He's here. <coughs> He's here. He's gonna kill me. Forrest, I don't think we can... What the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Horace Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. You're sick, Jimmy. He's out there, Jimmy. Go home, Jimmy. I think the first one fits him. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? <laughs> it's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in. <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh. Uh. uh Wait. Oh no. Who, uh. Who are you? Oh no, Ben! Looks like the Whistling Man doesn't like copycat killers. It's not even a copycat killer. True. You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend, we drove out to the old murder house, and... Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, Jimmy. Oh. oh, wow, we're gonna get a whole bunch of people killed. What? Mm. Okay, okay, it's gonna be okay, Carrie. I'm sorry about Jimmy. Focus! <laughs> Focus, bitch. Stay focused, stay focused, Carrie. Focus. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'm here. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're going to get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Force, listen. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with, and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... Uh, and... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything.
everything okay? No. We uh, we're figuring out a plan, but everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do, but I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker, or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I. Shut up, you. Oh, Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. These damn kids never learn. Are you okay? They're just dumb kids. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Hmm. They're just dumb kids. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one. Goes out to all the trap kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Ah, uh, time for bring on more murder, because I love murder. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. <laughs> Tension staff. Stop putting stickers on the office furniture. You're lowering the resale value of everything. Reggie. Friendship quiz. This might work. Jesus fucking Christ. Christ. Where did that come from? Oh, that fell. And you can look, I'm so proud of you. Make a lot of friends, work hard. Lots of love, mom. Aw. This is a cracked mug. Interns do it for free. Uh. <laughs> okay, go step on that mouse trap. Damn. Oh, you can pick it up. Yeah. It's just, that is a terrible mouse trap. It didn't even go off when you tossed it. Ah, there is a back. I didn't notice that before. Hmm. So. Yeah, I guess I just guessed on the others to get everyone to live. So they died sometimes. Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. All right, time to get them all killed. Shut the music off. This is Forrest Nash. Back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first. We'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Okay, so Hatchet... Choose between either Hot David or Kyle, because Heather's the answer. I mean, we obviously need to rely on Hot David. <laughs> yeah. Hot David. Hot David, I don't know if running up the roof is really possible, but I guess we'll see. Part two, do 
Whistling Man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. We will most likely end up in prison. So it can't be Seth, so either Jennifer or Scott. Likely. Wait. Oh, yeah, because Seth would be the correct answer. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously Scott. Scott. We know, Scott. You play a rogue in your weird basement game. We'll see how it goes in real life. Anyway, <laughs> that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. This plan is impressive. The plan is long. This plan is an, is ambitious. I mean, yeah, kind of is. This plan is uh, well, it's ambitious. Thank you. You're doing great. <laughs> What's the next part? <laughs> part four? We need someone to lead the whistling man away. Oh, hot and David and Heather would lead them away. Oh, so you need to choose two people to... We should lure the, the killer by running away. Oh, because Hot David will be on here. But since we told Hot David to go on ever so... It can literally be any of these. Uh, uh, the, the, the runner should obviously be... Seth. Seth. Yes, Seth. You know, you're the kind of man who runs towards danger. But today... Watch him actually sprint up to the killer. The <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so now we need to flip now this the over. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa... Well, Cynthia's not on the list. Lisa and Tammy both got two, so that's up, so that's out. Cause most likely to win an Oscar. So, oh. Cynthia, so they're not even on there. Yeah. Cynthia. Right, Cynthia. It'll do. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be who we got? Chad, Jennifer, Tammy, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Most. Uh. Most likely to end up in a car crash. Tammy and Jennifer are both on there. I was like going to pass their driving test without, without any errors, Jimmy, but there's not, Jimmy's not on here. Oh, most likely to beat everyone at go-karting, Chad's on there, so Chad's out. And I just... Oh, wait, I also just noticed there's a thing that says... Most likely to trip while running away in a horror movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't we choose either Scott or Seth? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they're gonna die. Well, no. Like, we would want to choose the person who is the most likely to trip. Oh, true. Yeah, um... Oh, whatever. Uh, have you seen Tammy and Jennifer on there? Tammy and uh, Jennifer are both mo on the most likely to end up in a car crash. Okay. Chad's yeah, out it's... is on the list for most likely to be everyone at go-karting. So Chad's out. Okay, yeah, so Chad. Chad's bad idea. Or good idea, so there's bad idea. 
uh, uh, Tammy. 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 I know we all love watching Americans scared. Yes, I. Yeah. Just do what they did in the movie. Uh. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Before I continue, why didn't the killer eventually figure out that they're calling the radio station and just start listening to the radio? And Doesn't do the, that actually happen? Not till the like, very like, end, and they actually attack the radio station. All right, yeah. Yeah, but they don't listen to them. And, like, do the opposite of what they're saying, so actually get the people. Whatever. Right. I hope so. Eh. <laughs> Be a dick. Say eh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just say eh. Yeah. I think they're screwed. Well, let's hope you're wrong. Let's hope I'm right. I hope you're right. I want to sit all the gates down. Tonight. Well, I think one of them will live because oh, last time when it was a good ending, it didn't. It, the killer did not go after the woman who called. It, it watched them, then just went off. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens. About so we might have one survivor. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. Don't die. All right, hit it. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> Don't die. Okay. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter to the roof. Whoa, whoa, careful. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Slaughter says go. Keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. We got God. Oh, God. Focus, it's okay. His face got... <laughs> his face got... His, his face got cut off? Well, I guess she was on the... Oh, she did survive. So terribly. Keep going. I still believe. I'm sorry. Keep going. Also, hey, Aderna. Hi, Aderna. You have to keep going. Don't give up, Terry. Okay. Don't give up. Right. Right. We just gotta keep pushing on. Time to trap the killer.
Oh, I guess he fell. And yeah. killed himself. <laughs> We got totaled, Carrie. What's happening? Get out of there now. What's happening? Yeah. Carrie, can you hear me? What's happening? <coughs> oh. oh, we crashed. Everyone ran. My legs trapped. Forest. <laughs> oh, is Carrie actually going to die? Sound like a like the flush sound. He just, he just stared at me. Carrie, Carrie. He just stared at me and got my leg out. I don't understand. Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I'm sorry for your loss. It's my fault. You know what they say. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a really awful pun thing. Yes, yes it is. Oh, you know what they say about plans, Carrie. Forrest? Plans are the first casualty in any struggle. Whew. After Jimmy, anyway. Forrest! I... I need to go. I need to get home. Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. So yeah, we basically murdered everyone but Carrie. That was, a, that was a lot. Our thoughts go out to the parents whose kids won't make it home tonight. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song. All I know is that Carrie's gonna need Walking therapy. In the dark. Hey, we had Hold a on. Town's gonna need therapy once we're done with them. Yeah, <laughs> Borkman said, or a lot of alcohol. Oh my god, Bork. Oh god. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Stream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real I can't service remember. for Dallas Creek tonight. It's I cool swear, you, I can't remember. I swear, oh, this is fucking haunty. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you... Keeping safe tonight. Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink. Okay, it's not. Get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. Yeah, this is the exact point in which I came in last time. And yeah, which means we're okay. So we're at four. When we saved the guy at the waste plant, we killed hit. Oh, when we killed a guy at the waste plant, then we had the guy at the maze. So that's five, and then a bunch of the kids. So that's six. So this is seven. I'm not counting like all the other phone calls, such as 
like Ponty and a woman calling about the the fucking disc thing. Yeah, I wasn't counting that. I was just counting the victims. Thanks, f friend. You talk a lot. No self promotion. Might as well. I don't allow self promotion on my show. Sorry. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. We'll, we'll try. Yeah. We'll call yeah. trying to get poor Ricky. Oh crowd. yeah, that's right. I used to roll with a bad yeah. crowd. Not all bad, but there was this one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time. I turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best oh yeah, a lot of people we kill, we had so we had to call and ask for information late, on the killer. Ricky. How did you turn things around? But they're now going to be all dead. Well then. Not much information to gather I there. <laughs> I learned yeah. how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. Important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh, oh. hello, Max. Oh. Welcome, Max. He's a good boy. We've gone to the dogs. We've gone to the dogs. There it is, folks. We've officially gone to the dogs. Come on, Forrest. Max is the best guest we've had. Yes, he is. He's not even here, Peggy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. What dog is he? The first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate? Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. You're a great pair. He's a special boy. Neighbors must love it. <laughs> Neighbors must love it. I'm sure your neighbors must love that. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm what? actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next uh, one... They didn't even say what song. You didn't say what song. They said something funky, something a boogie. Look through your song. Okay, so we got... I've done this before. 198X, David Scopo, The Flow, Crying for Help, Late Night Lurkers, Stab in Twilight, Storm Riders, The Word... Final breath and the hang ups. But something funky. Oh, uh, crying for help. Okay, I guess we'll go with the flow. I better put a record on. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, After all that. the murders we did, Talking Peggy. For my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, Collar? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Carrie! Hey, I I just... Shut up, book. Thank you for doing what you 
I mean, accessory. It still counts. <laughs> Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. Damn it, we failed in our mission. Now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he did I don't think Carrie was supposed to die. Why, why am I? Why what, um, Carrie? Why did he spare him? Because he spared him, her, in the, in the good ending as well. Oh, did she? Yeah, she oh, got okay. spared. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, let me just... Oh, yeah, I remember that. Is the victim. Right? Yeah. It doesn't say anything about anything about her being having to die. So he saw you as a victim. He wanted the, the prankster pranksters. He got bored. <laughs> he got bored. Oh, I would say I would say he saw you Maybe as he got victim. bored. He just didn't feel like oh. it. Sorry, Darren. We're just being assholes. We've just been choosing like answers to make us assholes, right? Got bored when he got to me. Yeah. Forest, not cool. I have to go. I can't do this. <sighs> oh, wow. Let's just get some music on the air. Carrie immediately hung yeah, up after music. choosing that answer. Music. Clear the air. Oh, well, yeah. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that for us. We have a caller. Wait, what? Why are you You're doing through that? You're to 189.16, The Scream. What That's ADHD, right? I guess. Again, Forrest. <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> Thanks for your concern. Uh, are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? My Peggy. Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. Oh, and shit. I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home. You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window. Maybe another song, you must love it, but we don't have it. Maybe another song. Yeah. I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one? We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, Forrest. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? It's miles from the station. It won't take a second to grab it. Nope. He's fast. Try again tomorrow. He's fast. Well, again, we're trying to be dicks. Oh. So. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm sorry, Don. I'm just not going out there. Oh, but I think you will. What? Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. <sighs> well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... Alright. Why don't you go? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to go out there. Forrest, someone might be in danger. And despite your being so damn curmudgeonly... I think you... Stop it, Peggy. Just... I'll go. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key no. to the fire door. What says Wait, I also... The fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but... Yeah. We should talk to Reggie. That goes against fire regulations. I'll hold the fort down while yes. you're... 
Maybe I'll even get a call. Lux says, I also love how you're not introducing any of these songs. Fuck yeah. Hey, yeah, I'm not gonna do my job. I don't get paid enough. Ooh, woman's not restroom. Hello. Right? What the Wait. Heck? Already gone in here? Now I'm in the men's. Oh. Oh, hello. That's different. Something about a big game. One, one of the gals of high, high school. Right? I don't think that's where the fire thing is. Alright. Oh, great. No handle. And you said that last time. I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. Out here. In the open. Hello. Hi! How are you? Here it is. Long ride home. All right, hold on. I forgot where a fucking fuse box was. Oh, there it is. Right there. Now it has to equal 70. So I got five. Don't forget that you can hold two things now. Oh, yeah. So right here we'll have 35. That's not 35, right? I, I'm talking about like this, the counting of one that's in a uh, few. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. And with uh, this, that will be 50, which means we will only need a 20. I wish I could fucking run. Is that the point of the game, though? And I believe that yellow one right there is a 20. Also, I don't know if we can trust these random fuses lying around. True. Yep, this is a 20. So that'll be 70. I know, man. Hmm. I can count. Bingo! Two plus two equals fish. No, it equals turtle. Survive that fall. Hey, good for you, Bright. <laughs> True. True to who? Is Bright correct or am I correct? What did Peggy say? Is two plus two fish or is it two or is two plus two turtle? Oh yay! Oh, that's not how math works. That math doesn't math. Ooh, there's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this.
Anything over here? Never did check. No. I wonder how the show's going. Can't go in there. Damn it, I tried. The show is going... nowhere. Obviously, because I'm not there helping people get murdered. Exactly. This is the very first true crime podcast. True crime where, where we're letting the crimes happen. <laughs> exactly. it's, it's true crime because crimes are truly now, happening for... on it. Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door was on fire. So the show is going surprisingly well. Peggy is using this moment to show that she's a better host than you. You heave that thing all the way up here. Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement, made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. I already know how to fuck this up. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station. You see, the target is Chuck Brody. His his leg is injured. So if he doesn't get warned in time, he's going to die. He can't really run. So, literally, we can just do any of these three. And Chuck will die. How's it going? I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Let's do this. Sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? All right, so Hatchie, which one do you want to do? Uh, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, or Aunt Williams? Rebecca Allen, we have actually have no idea who where they are, but Kim Walker and Aunt Williams, we do. I guess say Kim Walker. Kim Walker. Yes, so and where Kim... will I find them? They will be at the hospital because they're talking about flu shots and shit with them. So the hospital. The hospital. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Forrest, I'm through to the hospital, but they say there isn't anyone by that name there. Oh. What? Then who? <laughs> Boom. Jeez. It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now. Oh my god. The call board. It. I. One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Uh, just let me. Uh, I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. <sighs> Peggy, what's happening in there? Peggy. I'm back. He blew up the gas station, Forrest. Okay. I spoke to the fire department and the hospital. The fire department is useless now, as you know. And, uh... The hospital's only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, you... You've got to say something on the radio. You have to tell the town. I'm putting us back on air. Now. Gallows Creek. I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh... The gas station's been bombed. Please, everyone, stay safe. Stay inside. Honestly, from what I know from a gas station, if it does get blown up, it? it's going to do way more damage than just the gas station. Like, it's going to oh, be yeah. a massive explosion. Careful 
with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forest. <laughs> Peggy's gonna be so done with our shit. <laughs> I think she already is. She clearly already is. There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. All right. And yeah, if I remember correctly, when we go to that the mannequin room, we're going to record things. We're really close to the end. Yeah, I think that death was like the quickest. This is, we just had to choose one wrong person, one wrong place, and then boom. Death. Yeah. And hell, since I'm able to stay up till 2, we can... Definitely finish the game by then. Just finish the game and, and stream, and then that be it. And you can start your stream if you like. Hmm. Well, I wasn't gonna stream tonight. The key. Uh, Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. This is Peggy right now. Let's see. Hey, Forrest! Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. What have you found, Forrest? Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. I think I need to keep looking. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. You've said that twice. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. This all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. Forest. Yep. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That marks the time of death. Okay, so this area is worthless. Except for this. We're gonna need this for a later. Yeah, be sure to grab that. Yeah, I'll grab that before I leave. If you can. Yeah, I know we can pick that book up. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, it might flash you out without it. Uh... This looks useful. to arms, legs, and face, typically obtained by running through foliage, severe blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running without stopping. You know what would be funny? If 
one of your favorites sees me run up with everything that isn't evidence. <laughs> Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. I don't even know what the hell cortisol is. Guessing it's some kind of stress hormone. I'm I'm guessing. Or go there. It says that there's. Yeah, book one says yes. Okay, so there's supposed to be another tape where there's a fan. Oh, I'm an idiot. Sorry I made you do this, Virginia. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Oh. Damn it, at the magazines you have here, there's no porno magazines. Oh, I'll take that. I I've actually not played that. So I'm gonna see what that sounds like. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the Nope, you're not going to save anyone. He's not going to believe this. Now before we go... Let's go ahead and grab... Oh, he's not over here. It's over. Here. She's been killing people across the country. I'm assuming members of the t team who are ha he's gonna guide at night. Yeah, most likely. And yep, we got everything. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. 
Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? Yeah, she's I dead. No, I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? <sighs> if only she had made it. Then we might have learned more about what's going on. It's okay. We did what we could. The Not really. We could have saved them. Shot as it was. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved it after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier. Sandra Sharp. Sandra. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. Though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But mm. yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting then? <laughs> Bookworm, something, something, the bruising on arm changes when there's a lack of blood flow. Sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we. Could have asked him. And Sandra didn't make it either. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I I think it was Clyde starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, um... I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but true. But Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, 
Why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? Uh, I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Thank God you're back for us. Oh, there it is. Running out of stuff to nope, we get to keep it. With. Peggy, you're working ready. Okay, that's good. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Okay, so there's one thing I wanted to say before I continue. One thing I forgot that I found out this morning. Apparently mm. there's going to be, in the Netherlands, they're making a car that's supposed to be able to fly. But it looks so fucking stupid. Okay. Uh, it to me it looks like a combination of a dune buggy and a helicopter. I'll send it to Bookworm and Stream Planning. Just take a look at that thing. <laughs> That's supposed to be three hundred thousand dollars called the Pav V Liberty. Is it a tricycle too? It looks I, like it only has one wheel in the front. I don't know. But that's supposed to be a flying car, but it looks so fucking stupid. Let's just talk to the game designers that GTA fought. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do we make a flying car? Well, you get a dune buggy with only three wheels, and you just put a helicopter <laughs> rotor on top. <laughs> Does it even have a tail rotor? I don't know. I mean, it makes some sense. How else were they going to get it off the ground? I mean, yeah, but also it's... It looks so... Could they have not made the car look a bit bigger? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a back prop there. It looks so stupid. It's probably a lot... It's probably not that very safe either, to be honest. I wouldn't get into this thing. I would feel iffy about it. Three wheel vehicles Martin, you, are already in, kind of. Would, would you get into it if you were given a million dollars? No. I'd consider it. Probably not, because that would add weight, which would require more lift. True. Alright, so. It's our job or beats me is our answers. I'm choosing beats me. Beats me. Beats me. But we gotta do it. What about five million dollars? Right. No. So I'm not gonna get into something head. that could literally have a good chance leading Only to my Sandra death. Because I I don't know how too. to fly a car. One billion dollars? No. <laughs> Oh well. I'm sorry. We can either oh, well. apologize to Peggy or we say oh well. Oh well. Ah uh, well. You know, we win some and we lose some, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Looks like we've got a call coming in. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your no one does. <laughs> Well, it's the first of its kind. Oh god damn it. Uncle. 
sure, why not? Now, really? No. No. <laughs> yes. No? I don't want to. Oh, come on. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked it. But since he always has salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history. Yeah, Pepper Pepperoni. Happy You'd like to say that Mr. Pepper Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals of party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start a good You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! Damn it, Peggy, this is your fault. My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another Did our I didn't hear that the first it run. Out, okay? Did our yeah, choices be... make change it so that Force gets mad at Peggy? Yeah. This is 189.16. The screen. That's interesting. Force Nash, you're on the air, caller. Caller. <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forrest, are you okay? <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry, sorry, that was... that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about Not it. Not really, I've been okay? mainly Not planning on killing way. everyone that begs for help. Right We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, just... Forrest. Don. Why did you put that uh, record on the floor? I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a... I can do whatever the fuck oh, I want. But please? Uh, never mind that now. Of course, I'm calling because I need your help. Please, who's next? Are you in danger? Please, who's next? Please, Don, if you know something, if you know who the next target is... Oh, it's too late for that now. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, fine. Chuck Brody was the next target, but... That ship sailed. How'd you know if you you'd told me? Yeah, if you told me. Chuck, if you just told me, then... <sighs> I'm sorry, I probably should have. I just... I, I'm sorry. You said you needed help? I sure do. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me. You. I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. That helping? <laughs> helping? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Uh, ask neighbor, go elsewhere, use a key. <laughs> uh, go elsewhere? Can you go somewhere else? Well, home is the safest place I can be. Please, the front gate requires an entry code to open. I need that code to get inside. 
Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Always a part of town, not a dog person, a neighbor's dog. Always a part of town. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he muscled that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Those entry code. Uh, security system's name. That's probably what we actually have to look for. Yeah. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. My digits. Uh, Starling, ha. Huh? We'll try. A lot of digits. Six digits. Sounds like that would be hard to remember. Yes. Very hard, especially on a night like this. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All yeah, because right, this is an instant of a the all to enjoy. Well, whistling I'm man literally using into her the radio head. to yeah try to continue their mortars well we've never heard this didn't, yet say didn't you just put a record on the floor for some reason oh i just put that randomly for oh it's gone yeah because you picked up another record i just realized this was like an eye You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.6. I have a feeling I could accidentally fuck this up, so. Let's see, which is the longest save? This one. So let's not save on that. Seen the stream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Give entry code. The code is 715-914. Thank you, Forrest. Forest, what did we do? Whoops, I don't, I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> that's, that, that's his reaction. Whoops, maybe that wasn't. Forest, there's another call coming in. Evening we helped the murderer. On... Oh, oh, Forest, oh. the psycho somewhere in the room.
You've got to help me, man. Forrest. Make some room. Come back. I can't find my rifle, man. It's... I don't want to hurt anybody, but I can't let anything happen to... Oh, this motherfucker. Fucking hell. Maxie. I'm fine with murder, wrong. but I draw the line at animal. <laughs> The only casualty we care about. Yeah, Maxi. Poor Maxi. I don't, I don't think I like this run. <laughs> Put on the music, Bright. So, the whistling man is a woman? I know, I can't believe it. I had my suspicions. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. <laughs> yeah, just go full dick bag. Right at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Yeah, she seemed pretty normal. I knew she wasn't right. I thought she was just regular. Gallows Creek Strange. <laughs> yeah, go with that. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside, to mess with us. Maybe she actually wanted it. Yeah, you worked out a while ago, but went along with it anyway. Hmm. I don't know, these all seem kind of neutral. Maybe she actually wanted it. I mean, maybe she actually wanted it. It could be her favorite killing song. Ugh, that's awful. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might you wondering what to make of it all here's our take we now believe the killer is actually a woman one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you we're neighbors so look out out for each other and stay safe i'm sad to say but it's time to trust no one i think you said the bottom one last time true I don't remember if it was good or bad. Well, I believe in your judgment, Hatchet. I mean, I guess do the top one. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. Don't trust anyone called Dawn. <laughs> this could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been... What happened? Breathe. Is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? Yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. Got the Discord. We were heading back to his place when we heard this. Oh yeah, there's one thing where we where she asked what we have to do. One of the choices we pulled a knife out of the wound. Yeah. Like that. That's an immediate death sentence. <laughs> Oh no, Forrest. 
Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. Honestly, with this one, it's going to be really hard to play up deniable probability that you did to help. Yeah. Was it the whistling man? Was it a woman? Was it a woman? Casey, Stexen. was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please, he needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Oh yeah, I forgot the ambulance was getting gas at the gas station. And then it got, uh, gassed. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, well, I guess the least helpful information is what's your friend's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason! Jason Parker! Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and then... We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hmm. Right? Oh. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. We have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right. Listen, we need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, make sure. Pull the knife out of the wound. Uh, eject cobra venom into the wound. And they live. Where the hell is she gonna get Cobra Venom? Don't worry about it. That shit's expensive as fuck. I have my supplies. Don't worry about it. Where did you get it? Don't worry about it. You saying don't worry about it just makes me worry about it. <laughs> I just say I have connections. You snakes? <laughs> yeah, Are you was... keeping a cobra in your basement, Bright? No. You better not be. There's no way you're taking good care of that thing. No, I got the venom from Jiri. Jiri is not a cobra. No, but he's a Although... snake. <laughs> I mean, he, he would have better venom to use, but I also highly doubt that Jiri is complicit in your crimes. <laughs> right, right. You do, you do know that uh, snake venom is different between each snake, right? Maybe. What do you mean maybe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just might know the most obvious fun fact about snakes imaginable. It's right next. It's right there in my brain. Next to snakes, don't normally have legs. <laughs> well, they do if you genetically modify. <laughs> oh no, sun snakes have legs, or right. rather, vestigial legs. Yeah, we don't have little, much choice. We can the handle their asses. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding. 
bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. Take it out. Stop Got it. Force of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. Take it out and fill his wound with sense. giant Japanese hornets. Oh, Don't ask me how I got a supply of those. But I think we can handle this. Glad no way, that's so far, legal. There's more to go. What was that hatchet? Said there's no way that's legal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Are you, you sure you can't stay? I can't keep up. Keep going. Uh, I can't keep up. <laughs> I'm getting lost. I hope you're taking it all in, Peggy. Doing my best. If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> all right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. All right, time to have uh, Jason or whatever the fuck his name is die. Hello? How are you holding up? How's Jason? We're on our own. We're on our own. Casey, I have bad news. We're on our own for now. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Jason, why the hell didn't I do anything? No, Casey, you did the right thing. We got advice from somebody at St. Gabriel's. We're going to talk you through this. Oh, thank God. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? Yes. Take the knife out. Yeah, that has to be incredibly painful. We should definitely get it out of him. All right. Here it goes. Bye-bye, Jason. Just hold on. Wait, I was reading my notes. Did you say pull the knife out? Casey, we need pressure on the wound. Do you have any sort of cloths nearby you could use? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Use the laundry, oh. the cleaning rags, use your jacket. The cleaning rags, obviously. If the owl actually work? What? Are you saying that I actually work for the bad part? Like, get him to die? Yeah, that... Did you... Were you not listening to what she said? No. Anyways, about the poisons, Bright, have you been in contact with your mafia relatives again? Maybe. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Now is the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right, give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. I thought Jason would die. Right, buttons. What's up, right. Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. 
Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Okay, so what I remember is the old veteran dude. Yeah. But I forgot his name. I'll, I'll probably remember once you see him. I think it's John. Okay. She'll have to drive him. Any suggestions? Could somebody nearby help? That's probably what we need to ask right now. To speed this along. Yeah. Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? <clears throat> yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably... Oh, we still have to go office. down there anyways. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's yeah. a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on, naturally. <sighs> it's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have- Are they even still them. used anymore? You put them in a computer and so. they do something. Peggy? I sure as hell I haven't seen one in is. fucking anyway, years. Reggie decided True. that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical oh. records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. Oh yeah, I have no idea if this is true or not, but I heard Good. that someone in Florida. The office, so you'll hear me over the intercom. Shut the fuck up, Peggy. Someone in Florida apparently put the COVID vaccine in mosquitoes or released them to get people vaccinated. I have no idea if that's true or not. That sounds like something a Florida man would do. But I honestly I don't think that, that would be work. All, yeah, I can't imagine that would all be effective. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, mosquitoes suck. They don't... In they would inject, like, the, the stuff that makes you itch. I forgot what the fuck the chemical compound is. Well, that's the thing. Like, if they have something in their system that can be swapped back into your system it'll happen but that's not exactly Looks how like vaccines I tend to function what you'll actually do is basically just immuni immunize a bunch of mosquitoes for a disease that they probably can't get anyway yeah so imagine that what if covid actually could kill mosquitoes that'd be awesome it would be awesome but it also would not be awesome because the male males are pollinators. Yeah. Which means we'd also be losing a good portion of pollinators as well. Could this so. be it? Uh, 1107. Oh shit, wrong button. Wrong button. Nice. So You're a see. master locksmith. 
Uh, okay, so we don't need John. We don't need Peggy. Or Karen. This is pain. Yeet. Jesus. I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Did he have booze earlier? He's, he's going this shock. Peggy, what did the nurse say? Did he have booze earlier? Were you guys drinking earlier? Maybe it's a nasty hangover. No! Jason doesn't even drink! Forrest, I think he's going into shock. But the police seem to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I... I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's wounds. Elevate Jason's legs. Elevate the wounds. Casey, I need you to prop Jason up. We need to raise his wounds. Both of his wounds? You want me to fold him up like an accordion? Did the nurse really tell you that? That doesn't sound right, Forrest. We really need to be careful. If we get anything wrong now, then I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. Uh, replace the bandage, apply an additional bandage. 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 Huh? Huh? Replace the bandage. That's right. You need to carefully remove the bandage and... Oh, I just realized there's a light right there. What do you have nearby? I've used the rest On the window. Warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. Oh. Jason's gonna die. It's gonna be fine to be strong for Jason. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. I'm gonna be honest, Casey. It's not looking good. But you, me, Peggy, we're doing everything we can to get him out. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, Forrest, Correct. we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. Her and Peggy are doing everything they can to help. You're just do being a dumbass. Yeah. Trying to get... Here's the definition of correction. Oh, it actually uh, doesn't matter because I didn't look up John. It's not going to show up on here. So do we call so... Bradley or Barbara? I trust Barbara. <laughs> Barbara's our best option. She lives on Craven Street. Her number is 54218. Nine zero. Craven Street. Yeah, that should be close enough. I'll call her now. Barbara, it's Peggy. Listen, something's happened and... Yeah, yeah, Barbara, I can believe Brad did that. But listen, there's been a... Barbara, yes, that's terrible. But someone's been stabbed. Yes, stabbed. At 25 Nancy Drive. There's no ambulance. <laughs> the bridge just starts coughing. 
something. ASAP or they won't make it. I know it's a lot. Please, Barbara. I'm here with Forrest, and he said you were our best bet. You were at the KFAM first aid session, right? So you at least had some training. Sure, but even still, you're our best bet. Thank you. Remember, you're looking for Jason and Casey. Well? I don't know. She was pretty upset about a fight with Brad. Oh. At least we have a volunteer. All right. Well, we better let Casey know what's going on. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. How's he now? Are you hurt? Are you hurt? When he was thrashing around, did he hurt you in any way? Or, or are you okay? I'm fine, but Jason passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. I think Discord. Someone is coming. You're gonna be just. I don't know. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. That must be them. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. And Jason dies. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. pretty late this might be your last break for the night so try to enjoy it give me a buzz when you want to go back on air let's roll you got it we've got another call coming through too time to turn the music off oh we have another call coming in but hang on what's up Peggy uh oh Peggy you're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been <laughs> oh. a busy night. Surprise! Yeah. It's Leslie, our 911 Yeah, we're definitely near the end, Hatchet. We're gonna finish it tonight. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? Because, I mean, the final yeah. part is the That's easiest. Exactly we just gotta right. piss off the killer. Yeah. <laughs> and you know me. That's easy. It does not take me long to piss someone off. It's been a long night. Yeah. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. Bookworm, do you believe in my power to piss people well, off? It shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines, and they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news! That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Yes, Bright. No one can piss people off better. <laughs> I was going to say, Bookworm, I just now noticed this. Uh, we were talking about venoms, not poisons. Those are two different things. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Haven't we helped enough? What do you need? Gallows Creeks is too big. <laughs> Gallows Creek is too big. Come on, Leslie, can't you just, I don't know, secure the town? It's not that easy to secure a whole town, no matter how small, Forrest. Now listen, it might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Now we're gonna piss her off. Time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. Once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I don't know. I'll do my best. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Is she really just gonna give up her location? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Nah, I'll be dead. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Well, in game. <sighs> God, it sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Let's get back on air. I hope you're right. I don't think it's going to be that easy. I don't think it's going to be that easy. It's nice to think, Peggy, but I don't reckon Dawn is going to give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight, no. But neither will we. Now, let's get you back into the arena. Oh, no, we will. Or, well, I will. Okay, first, right, well. shut the music off. <laughs> Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to the scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Forrest? Casey, is that you? Are you all right? Forrest, it's Jason. Don't worry. Is he okay? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Is he... he... He's gone. Oh, Jason. Your friend. They tried everything they could. They said he's just lost too much blood. They still there? I'm sorry. They still there? Are they still with you? Can we... I'll have to call them up tomorrow. I can't believe he's gone. Could I have done more? You did everything you could have done. You both did. I'm sure Jason knows that. Thank you, Forrest. I really hope so. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry. It feels sorry, awful hearing that. Thank you. Line. I yeah. just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. It's all right, Peggy. I understand. Do what you need to do. Thank you, Casey. I'll be right back. Uh, Forrest? Murder. Yes, Casey? Before Jason passed out, I... I asked him who did this. And I think he knew who attacked him. Are you serious? Yeah. He said it had to do with a boy named George Barrow? He mentioned him. The boy who drowned. I guess I... That's what Jason said. He said that George died during... God, what was it? Whistling night? Some kind of prank night. And that the person who stabbed him wanted revenge for George. Casey, are you absolutely sure this is what Jason said? Yeah, I think so. Jason still seemed with it when he was telling me. So I don't doubt what he said. Did you say Jason told you who the whistling man is? He did. He said it was a woman. They went to school together. Somebody called Mar What? What happened? Are we still on air? No, yep. No, and then that's where I turn the power back on. Come back into Peggy's room and that's on. the end. I don't have... Okay. Well, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Nikki picked it up a while ago. I wanted to actually start stream earlier, but An people were over. Broadcast? Like I explained earlier. With everything. Yeah. We kind of need to get better at... Oh, there goes Adrena. We kind of need to be get better at not just sitting here talking for like 30 minutes. True, yeah. 
big red button. Just press that. I'll see you when you're back. I didn't hear a single word she said because it's hard to hear at that point. But I saw Sorry. what she said. Oh no, it wasn't you. It's was just that it's hard to hear her through the glass without the mic microphone and everything. It's not you. I know what I have to do. I like how supposedly the power's out, yet majority of the lights and shit is still going on. Huh. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Oh yeah, it's definitely hard to navigate through this in the fucking dark. That must be it. Oh, we've got power. Whistling there. I need to warn Peggy. Hey, did you actually see the whistling man come in, or did you have to leave for a bit and come back? What the hell? The hell is that up there? Rocket ship? Okay. Mm. Kind of looks like it. Oh no, where's Peggy, Hatchet? Oh, no. Peggy! Where did you go? Okay. No way. This can't be happening. That's this. A, a call. Where's Peggy? Where do you want? What do you want? Do you Why want? does it say where do you want? Get to talk to you again, Forrest. You know, I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. All right. So let's make the most of it. Uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not if that's okay. <laughs> oh, huh? I thought we'd end tonight's whistling man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You crazy bitch. Let me go. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. Daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. You're here. But you're here. I see you. you. You're standing right in front of me. Oh, I get it. You're wondering who's there at the station with you. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son. This is a lot. Hi, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. Oh. Don't Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? That are you? Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Bernie went crazy wearing this. Yeah, now think about it. If you look at the eye holes, you can't see go. the pupils. Well, I mean, it's really Cal? dark as hell. You wouldn't be able to see it. George, anyway. his old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. 
Not Dawn Hawk. Quiet Teddy. Quiet Versus Teddy. The hunters. Be quiet, if quiet Teddy. Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. Twenty years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. I have a feeling I might fuck up, so... It's a good idea. <laughs> You might fuck up and forest. do it right. Yeah. We blow this whole thing wide open, but you didn't really sell yourself too well tonight. Where do you go? I'll get going. Let me help. <laughs> Let me help. No, wait. I, I can still help you. Oh shit. Wait a minute. Back off. Don't come any closer. Don't worry. I'll let Peggy know you asked about her before I send her your way. Well, we're fucked. That's not the cheesiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Is it actually going to do credits or... Yep. Up oh, and everyone dies. <laughs> we did it. He killed everybody. <laughs> I'm going to start to get the epilogue and credits. Yeah. The thing is, I don't know if there's any... Let's see... Where's sure everyone being dead? What I'm mainly looking for... Is Cock. Nope. Uh, I see, well, I mean, I see Martinez. I don't see. I, they would have said something by now. Because so far we're just hearing music. Well, I mean, last time there wasn't, like, just music. Until the credits were done with TV. Right? Sure. Thing is, I do. Can I save here? No, I can't. I want to. I know there was like a game where you you're trying to figure out a killer or whatnot, and if you go through a door, you'll get an extra cutscene or something. I don't know if it's this game. I don't believe it was this game. Yeah, I think it's just gonna do the music and credits for the entire time. Oh well, yeah, but if there's an epilogue, it imply that it comes after the credits. No, last time it was in the credits. Yeah, because it was in the credits and I was talking about chasing him up to Whistling Point. And they jump off. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, might as well just cut it. Well, I can just do something real quick. Is this sort of music that I primarily hear in porn?
Killer Frequency Hentai Edition. <laughs> Oh, there is talk eventually. But apparently this time instead of it being... During the beginning, it's at the end, apparently. Like at the end of the credits? Close to the end oh, of the credits, like the credits yeah. Done. Well, there was supposed to be talk. Like saying, oh, what... Uh... Is there any sign of a suspect? And the and the other says, "No, there's no suspect to be set found." I know. Oh well, yeah. we did get the bad endings. I got the achievement for it. My favorite activity is ensuring the deaths of as many people as. You can just call me. The United States Military Industrial Complex. Oh my God. Hey, I said I can go all the way to uh, 2 a.m. and it is 1.57 a.m. That's not 2 a.m. You're a liar. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I don't even know what that means in that case. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, book on last words, go. You know what I'm about to do, Bright? What? I'm about to look at Twitter. Oh, for fuck's sake. Bookworm! And now it goes quiet. There is much porn. Oh, for fuck's sake. All of the porn. Yeah, that, that 30 minutes definitely took a chunk. Because we would probably be like maybe 4 hours and 35 minutes. Instead of 5 hours. Mm -hmm. In the stream, so... But that's fine. I mean, it's not the worst uh, starting soon screen we've had. I mean, yeah. The worst was probably that last conversation with Dragon. Yeah. Look, Wes telling me to get off Twitter and more last words. Give her money if you can to help her with the they did. Oh wait, they already did? They're showing it on right now. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> and fuck you, Bokram, for using that fucker. It will always be that fucker. Anyways, hatchet, last words, go. And remember, kids. Taxes. That's it. Taxes. Oh, for fuck's sake. No. No, thanks. <laughs> no. no, I don't think I will. <laughs> it's Fine. okay. Fine, I'll do my actual last words. Oh. And remember, kids... Taxes. You know, I think about it. How much money would the SB Foundation owe to IRS for the shit they do? An amount. 
taxes are a thing the government is currently using to fund some bad shit. I mean, yeah, that's kind of just like the general state of existence. Our taxes go to fuel the prison the prison industrial complex too. And speaking of government, there's this one cartoon that's really fucking cute on uh, YouTube where Winnie the Pooh is just trying to get honey from uh, I think it was like a, a super uh, something uh, like Walmart and uh, a grocery store. That's what I was trying to think of. I'm trying to get, uh, but it, the grocery store is closing and they're being asked to leave and eventually it leads to them being the, the leader of the world. And when he becomes leader of the world, all problems are solved. Somehow. Okay. It's it's funny and cute. Book says they are an international org, aren't they? Yeah, the MCP Foundation. Yeah. They operate outside of governmental bounds. In fact, if you go by the Ouroboros cycle... Uh, I forget. I don't think it's stated what it may be stated what country, but I can't remember if it was. But there's one country, one of the O five is in, and they're and they're the main reasons there. There's like a civil war going on. They're, they're literally causing a civil war to happen by just being there. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Xi Jinping was the leader of the world. <laughs> oh my god. I hope I remembered his name correctly. You are going to be banned from China. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um... My last words, uh, danger noodles. Uh, I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time for your next mission. And the brown Boobies. note, the brown note is a real thing. It is not disproven. <laughs>